Well, hello again, and welcome to more amateur radio fun with VK6ES. Now, I got some feedback um, yesterday or the day before regarding the two videos I did for this uh, tuner. Now, one was that I think I said, I can't remember if I said it on one of the videos or whether I said it to one of the guys that I work with that's uh, familiar with these and used to use these back in the day, I think is the, uh, the American expression. Uh, because these hail from the 70s, I believe, so 40 years old this could be. That sounded a bit like Yoda then, didn't I? 40 years old this could be. Um, tells me that um, uh, I, I may have said, uh, they're tw you know, if you pick one of these up for $20, and he said these were quite expensive back in the day, and probably 50 bucks would be a reasonable price to pay for something like this, maybe even 75 so uh, I don't know, um, although I was playing around with radio 40 years ago, I wasn't playing around with these. So I, would I pay 75 bucks for it? Don't know. Um, mm, to be perfectly honest, I probably wouldn't because you know, I would think, well, you know, how much more would I have to put to it to get a T-match? How much would it cost me to make a T-match? Uh, what I don't like about it is... Well, there's a couple of things I don't like about it. One is that it's got this rotary inductor here. This rotary inductor. Which is probably going to be a little bit lossy. And it's got switched capacitors here. Now, I know it's what an auto ATU does. <coughs> switches through you know, different combinations of capacitors and what have you. But I think if you're going to... You know, if you're going to have a manual ATU, uh, probably your best bet will be a T match or an SPC match, and um, and and uh, just have it made of the right components. Anyway, if you're new to amateur radio and you just want to have a bit of a play around on HF and um, get yourself get yourself on the air, then you know one of these from a ham fest for 50 bucks, something like that, would uh, you might be able to haggle him down to 50 bucks, or even 40 would uh, would get you on the air, and you could have a bit of fun with your 817. You could match it to bits of wire and what have you. Now. I described the tuning method in the uh, previous, uh, in the first video, but um, you know the feedback was when it's a bit dark. Now I filmed that about midnight uh, the other night, so it was a bit dark. So now it's daylight, and you can clearly see the front. I'm not going to, I won't tune it again. But um, basically, you set this to the middle, this to the middle and then you just adjust that. Um, if you didn't have an antenna analyzer, you'd adjust that for maximum noise on your receiver, and that's going to get you in the ballpark. And uh, then you can just press the PTT on your radio and look at this meter here. And this meter is, um, it's, it's, uh, it's got a scale 0 to 100, it doesn't really mean much. It's a, a relative antenna current indication only. Okay, So you would then press the PTT and adjust these two for the maximum antenna current. Now, with a solid state radio, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't switch these with the PTT pressed. So release the PTT, and then you make the then you make the adjustments. And uh, I think I showed on the other video this will match on uh, 20 meters. Uh, yeah, it will match on 40 meters. And then once you've got your match combination here, you just write it in the appropriate column. So 10 meters, 20 meters, 40 meters, 80 meters, 160 meters. If you're wearing a Harris tweed jacket with leather patches on the elbows and you've got a band-aid around at least one hinge of your glasses. Now, if you buy one of these and you look inside it, you may go, uh, we can't see it from that, hang on a sec. Let's just pan that out a bit. You may go, good heavens, what on earth is this arrangement here? You've got an insulated post going through the case here that's marked on the other side as earth. And you have these two cables here going from antenna one and antenna 2, might be the other way around, I can't be bothered to look at the front panel, but these are both our antenna outputs. <coughs> Excuse me. Connected to this post, 
which is then connected via a 0.1 microfarad, that's 10,000 puff capacitor, to ground, which is going to kill your RF. That's going to be a dead short. This capacitor here, this 0.01, is going to be a dead short to RF. And you're going to look at that and you're going to think, wait a minute, someone's been playing around with this. This is, this is, going, to, this is going to short all my RF to ground. Whoever sold this to me doesn't want me to get on their net. Well, that's what I thought when I first looked at it, but not so fast. Not so fast, because what's actually in here, in here, and in there, are resistors. And what they're for is they are to prevent static crashes. So you've got some high value resistors here. I'll measure them in a second, show, show, you, uh, show you the sort of values. And <clears throat> what this 0.01 capacitor is doing is connecting the, the ground of the case through this isolated post here to an isolated ground terminal on the back here. So if, you're, if you've got it on a boat and you want to keep the chassis isolated from the vessel hull, you connect the earth up to that point there. And that is, that is as good a ground at RF as this bolt connected to the case. Now, um, I'll, just get a, I'll just get a circuit diagram. Now, this is a circuit diagram. It's not actually of this tuner, but it's of another Kodan tuner, and it's very, very similar. Now, can you see... I'm having to reach around the camera here, so this is a bit, a bit iffy. Right, there's one, two, three, there's four. One meg resistors. This is the antenna output. This is, this is a different tuner, as I say. It's only got one antenna output, but if you can imagine a switch. Uh, there'll be a, actually there'll be a switch here. This is the um, uh, the little. Uh, this will be actually a solid wire going through the the centre of a little toroidal transformer, which is driving this arrangement here, which is giving you your, your peak indication here. Now, um, there's the one meg resistors for getting rid of the static crashes. So, we we'll put a meter on. We can look into that, can we? Can we look into that? Let's prop it up with the trusty old tape measure. There we go. Stay. So if I put a meter on the antenna post, that uh, actually the one that is not switched, because I don't want to be reading through the tuner, and it's on a times 10,000 range, Good idea if you can see the meter as well, probably. So that goes on there like that, and that goes on there like that. And if you can see that, can you see that needle moving? It's a very small viewfinder on this camera, but that says five megs. So there's a five meg resistor between the two, between each. Let's just switch the other one over. Let's make sure it's the same on the top one. Yeah, it is. So there's a five meg resistor from each antenna post to ground to get rid of any static crashes. Um, so uh, that's the score with that. So if you open one of these up and you think, wait a minute, what's going on here? And you can't get a circuit diagram of this tuner, then that's what's, uh, that's what's going on. So don't cut it off. Don't start mucking around, modifying it. That is how it's supposed to look inside. And just to just to finish that off, so you know exactly what it's supposed to look inside, look like inside. That's the input matching transformer down there, switchable device. And the blooming viewfinder of my camera's just gone dark. And uh, there's a ceramic switch there. This one's this one's a uh, completely unmodified one of these. So this belongs to Peter VK6PM. He's got himself a nice little uh, nice little tuner here. Uh, butt joints, but then you know that's the sort of standard. Looks like it was the standard 40 years ago as well. Although I don't remember doing butt joints 40 years ago. But, um, okay, and uh, and there's the wafer switch. So that will be part three of the Kodan. Oops, where are we? 
the Kodan 7411 Mark II antenna tuner. I hope you found that um, interesting or entertaining or both or even uh, even potentially useful. Uh, thanks for watching.